Today, we'll add story timelines to our scene and control how and when to play them. We'll cover the Unity timeline's basic tracks, activation tracks, animation tracks, and audio tracks. In your scene, create an empty game object called Story Director and Timelines. The children of this game object will have all the story cinematics, the timelines. If you want to follow along, I link to some free assets, and I also put a link to the asset store scenes that I'm using. Doesn't matter if you're playing with simple shapes or working in a scene like me. Let's make a couple game objects for the timelines. Right click, create empty, let's call this one Start. This will have the timeline when we enter the scene. For the next timeline object, you can make something appear in your scene, like me, or you could just come up with something based on what you think the player might want to click on. So I'll make it so that when the player clicks on the wizard, this ogre here is summoned. Therefore, I'll call this game object Summon Ogre Cinematic. Next, in the Package Manager, go to the Unity Registry and download Timeline. And then go to Window, Sequencing, and Timeline. Alright, so I'll drag in that Timeline window. And then we get some text that says to start creating a timeline, select a game object. And we just made a couple of those. So click on start and let's make a timeline here. I'm just going to save over my previous one. And there you can see that we have a playable director and it's set to play on awake, which is good. We want that for start. So on summon ogre, I'll create another one. Save over the previous one I made. And then on this one, we want to not have it play on awake. And then of course we can see the different timelines if we select on the different objects. In the previous point and click video, we made these interactable selection objects, the blue spheres. These objects are in the world. On start, we send them from the world to screen space at pixel coordinates. And our cursor controller script checks the distance between the mouse cursor and whatever is on the interactable list that the interactable manager has. Definitely check the point and click video, especially the system diagram in the beginning. So I'll turn off all of the other interactable objects and let's focus on the interactable wizard object. Like our wizard, anything out there can fire the add to interactables event created by the interactable manager. The interactable manager is listening for it and responds by adding the transform component, for example, the interactable wizard transform to its list of interactables. Now I should say that this on enable, on disable, event invoking, it's best to put this into another script because right now the script is doing two separate things and you'll see what I mean. So let's create a script called interactable item activation. That's fine for now. And I'll paste the on enable, on disable and event invoking and delete it from the interactable wizard script. Then I'll drag this interactable item activation script to the wizard. Therefore, the wizard has two scripts, an interactable item activation script that can go on everything, wizards, ogres, skeletons, and an interactable wizard script that's just for invoking some story event when we click on the guy. And speaking of story events when we click on the guy, we need a story event for when we click on the guy. Let's do public static action, and we need to have using system to use actions and let's call this event on click wizard summons ogre and then in the on click action method which is the implementation of the i interactable interface let's do on click wizard summons ogre invoke if you're following along have something in your scene you want to click on first at the start and then something that will become clickable after you click on the first thing so, for example, you click to turn on an oven, and then you can click on an uncooked pie. I'm dragging the interactable item activation script to the ogre because I want to click on the wizard first, which summons the ogre, and then be able to click on the ogre. Maybe the ogre uh, delivers pies. Now, here's where the timeline magic happens. Select your start object with the start timeline. Drag your starting interactable object into the timeline and make it an activation track. When the interactable wizard object is enabled, it's going to fire that event for the manager to add this to the interactable list. And then you can adjust the ends of this block so that it's disabled in the beginning and then enabled. Maybe there's a quick title screen on start and you don't want the player to be able to click on anything. Next, I'll bring in the interactable ogre object, and we don't want to be able to click on this on start, so I'll make an activation track and then just delete the block. So then if we scrub the timeline on start, 
we can see that we can only click on the wizard. Clicking on the wizard will play the second timeline, the Summon Ogre cinematic timeline. And at that point, we only want to be able to click on the ogre. So let's bring in the interactable wizard as an activation track and delete the block so it's disabled. And then bring in the interactable ogre, add activation track, and have it enabled. And actually, if we're summoning an ogre, the ogre shouldn't be there, and then the ogre should appear, right? So let's do that with the ogre game object. The ogre shouldn't be there at first, so I'll go to the start timeline, and then in story game objects, I'll bring in the ogre. That is the ogre graphics, the 3D model. And I'll make it an activation track and delete, so the ogre isn't there. Then we want to go to the summon ogre cinematic, and we'll bring in the ogre game object and make it activate a little bit later on in the timeline. So there's some time for ogre pie delivery appearance magic. And the ogre is also interactable at that point because how else are we gonna get the pie? So the interactable ogre object, of course, has that interactable item activation script, but it does not yet have an event for what should happen on click. Start happens on start, but how do we play these other timelines? Ugh, why you gotta ask me all these questions? Just kidding, let's do that next. Let's play different timelines when we click on different things. Make a new script called Story Cinematic Director and drag it to your Story Director and Timelines parent game object that has all the timelines and playable director components underneath. When we click on something, the interactable something, the wizard, fires off an event. Here we'll subscribe a method to that event that plays the new timeline. We'll need to use unityengine.playables and then make a variable for the next timeline you want to play. It's marked as private because nothing should be able to access this, but serializing it means we can see it in the inspector. So go ahead and drag your second playable director object into the playable director slot. There will probably be a bunch of story events, so right off the bat, I made a subscribe to story events method, and here's where the story cinematic director, or the timeline director, can subscribe to the various story events. In my example, the method play summon ogre cinematic is subscribed to the interactable wizards event that fires on click. And here's where the naming is really helpful because all the methods could be called play something something something. And all the events out there you can find by typing in interactable something. When I click on the wizard, the wizard summon ogre event will fire and then play summon ogre happens. Play summon ogre plays the summon ogre cinematic timeline. Summon ogre cinematic dot play. It's as easy as that. And then we don't want to keep this event subscription in memory, so we unsubscribe from the event. All right, so let's take a look at this working. In play mode, the start timeline plays. The wizard we can see is interactable. And when we click on the wizard, we can see that the summon ogre cinematic plays. At that point, we can't click on the wizard anymore. The ogre appears, and we can see it's been added to our interactable list. Of course, nothing happens when you click on the ogre, so just leave him alone. At least until we write an interactable ogre script. Let's cover a few of the other basic timeline tracks. I have a particle system for the summoning special effects. I can also do a simple activation with that, and the particle system will play on awake. It just needs to be set as inactive on start before we play it so it can switch on. We can also do animation tracks in the timeline. I'll animate the ogre up from the ground. First, I'll need to lock the window in place on the summon ogre cinematic timeline. Then we can drag the ogre in. Press this little red dot to arm the recording, and then bring the enable track back so we can see them. Now that the record button is flashing and the window is locked, I'll animate the ogre. And we'll need the scene view to grab the gizmo. I'll move the timeline to the end of the animation and just put in the same value. Press enter and it'll make a keyframe for our endpoint. Then I'll go to the beginning of the track and drag the gizmo down, so it'll be like he's coming up from the floor. I'll animate the rotation too. And there we go, he spins in. So the effect is kind of getting there. Adding some audio is really easy. I'll drag in this harp sound. Not bad. And then maybe some parameters of the particle system can change to have a better effect. 
So I'll bring in the Summon Magic Particle System and add an animation track. Let's have the particle emission circle start out wide at maybe 2 or 1 meters and then get smaller. That way it looks like the magic dust is condensing, bringing the troll in. And I'd like to edit this keyframe here so it happens earlier. It should look like he's coming out of the magic. So I'll turn off the record button. And then in the kebab or three dot menu, we can do edit in animation window and you can adjust the keyframes there. And I'll do the same with the ogre. Let's have that spinning happen a little later on so that the magic has some time to do its magic. And this is where we start tweaking as far as the animation and the parameters. All right, nice work. I know this was pretty simple, but there's a lot you can do with what we've covered. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.